was going to go use also in the Oberto dry dock kit. Oh, there's another one. You are going to f die. I swear, I swear, you know what? Um, I was actually taking a look at all my pieces and looking at some screenshots, kind of just planning out how I want to go about this thing. Um, so first off, I already, the, the putty's already dried and I've already sanded down. I don't know if you can see what's left of it, but there's, uh, the circles from the, I guess the ejection of the mold is all taken care of. Uh, it's all planed perfectly smooth, even though you really won't see this that well, only in like this direction. Up here is more critical, and this is getting painted, so I needed to make sure that was perfectly flat. Um, but I did a modification that I noticed looking at, you know, some of the screenshots on how the interior walls is supposed to look like on this thing. Now, if you have this kit you'll notice that over here there's supposed to be an entryway a doorway but it's not so that's one modification and um, the other one is down here there's a bunch of very small little pinholes those are supposed to be be blue lights coming through there so that's another modification to address and one for me is a is kind of like a personal touch. I don't know if there's one, but it seemed like it would make sense. Over here, there's like this little alcove. Uh, it was supposed to actually go to one of the um, shuttle bay pod doors on the outside. Um, but you really can't see in here at all. But I would like to make this kind of like like illuminated like like just a little bit like it had a little overhead light on there i mean like it's a dark alcove why would you not so i actually did the modifications on the other side you can see i put the doorway through here and i just put a couple like three little small holes in the very back of up here so that way whatever light that gets illuminated from the inside of the secondary hole will hopefully it will just give just a little bit to come through and you probably can't see it, but I did put a bunch of really micro, very micro sized holes in it. Now, um, I don't think you can actually just do it with a regular drill bit, the, small, the smallest drill bit you can do with a pin vise. That's why I think a lot of people don't either go for it or just because it's going to be kind of hard to see anyways because you're going to be going looking down this way anyways. But I want to at least try and at least attempt it. So what I actually use to make these really small holes is a kit like this. These you can get from Harbor Freight. They're only like about $7. And you get like two of these things. And each one there are two sets. And the smallest, the biggest one that it comes with is roughly about a sixteenth of an inch. That's the biggest one. And the smallest one... I want to say it's very close to a human hair. It is that small. Now being that small, it's also that fragile. You can actually snap these things easily. So I wouldn't recommend putting it in a Dremel or a hand drill. Or I, I, I was even thinking about using my drill press, but no, you don't want to do that. Um, I would just do it by hand itself. Just a little twisty twist. Plus, these things are so fat anyways. It says on it it can take RPM. I kind of doubt it because these things are very... They're so thin you can easily snap it. But... Just show you what I, how I did these. The good thing is you can see where they're supposed to be. So, all you really got to do is... Is that you just start on a hole here. And just like hand twist... Just, and it'll go through easily. It doesn't take much effort at all through this plastic. See what I mean? And also, 
you have like the walkway here. Try to keep like this, the hole you're making parallel along with the wall because it's so easy you can end up going this way, this way, this way, that way. And then when you look at it like in one direction, you'll you'll see like, oh, it didn't go all the way through. Or even though it did, you're at an angle. You're going upwards, downwards, straight. So try to keep try to keep it straight as you can all the way through. So I suggest starting it and just kind of looking it down this way as you go and just line it up with this. So you just screw it through. You know, give it a little back and forth twist, clean it off, and then go from the back side, help clean off some of that flash that it pushed out. Just cleans up the hole a little bit better. A little back and forth twist action you, at, until the point where you can almost use this like a file. And that's, and that's all it really is. So that's one hole done. So, but that's how I'm gonna do that one. That's how I did these. Just gotta do it all the way down the line. That's tedious. I don't need to film the whole thing. But like I said, I suggest getting these things. Like I said, $7 a Harbor Freight. You get a bunch of them. If you break them, it's no big deal. They're very cheap. Uh, if, if it's like one of those weekends where you can get a 20% off coupon, go ahead. That's great too. Sometimes they have coupons for uh, buy five things for under, uh, you can buy five things for 20% off for anything under $10. Buy a whole bunch of them so that way you have them forever. Um, these things are really great for something really small. Basically, you can use, some people use these for carburetors for cleaning out the fuel jets on them. Um, but yeah, these, these little things, freaking awesome for the price. Um, now, as for the doorway, that was a challenge. Um, see, I couldn't just use my regular pin vise into it because the problem is you have mainly because of this part right here. Even there's many ways you're going out of your at an angle, you're at an angle because you really want to go straight on. So what I had to do is actually find the widest drill bit that's going to be for the entryway because you know with drill bits you know the thinner they are the shorter they get and they just gradually get taller and taller i literally had to take the widest one that's going to work put it to the it's barely holding on just a hair of it wrench the damn thing on and the reason why is because the only the only straightest way i can actually attack this thing is from the back going forward and as you can see, between here and here, that's the only way I can keep it straight because if I go this way, I can't do it because of this lip right here and the head of this is resting on here so it's at an angle. This is the only way I can get it to go straight. This was very tedious because my guide also is this, this, uh, this floor basically the walkway that's what it's supposed to be so this was a tedious job just trying to you know get it lined up like this so that's what I had to do to do this is to get a hole going and then you know just start microfiling basically like uh, trying to fire your way out of jail took a lot of time but that's kind of like if you want something that you want it to look good and you want all the details you you want to like have anyone else that does this thing tries to see what you've done that they did it by like looking there oh look like hey crap you, you got a doorway how'd you do that oh crap how'd you get the blue lights through there you know how'd you actually get holes that small you know and no i'm wrong thing i'm not drawing these out a lot of people like to light up this but Ed, but you know you look at the motion picture scenes of the shuttle bay uh no matter which angle whether you're looking in looking out or whatever and all the ones where you see with this even in the rendering from otoy even in theirs these don't light up so these are not lights if you want to make them lights fine but you know they're not 
If you ask me, I think they're air conditioning units or whatever. But I have not seen one official Canon thing that says they're lights. So I'm not going to do it. They're not lights to me. Um, the lights are from above. So, well, I'm going to kind of do off camera because this is the tedious part is making the door work. This, the little blue lights, no problem. This, I'm going to make the door for this one. And then hopefully we'll be back on track on starting to get this stuff light blocked. Unless I find something else, and I'll tell you about it. Update pieces. I already light blocked them only on the back side. Had a little bit of an issue. Kind of did a rookie mistake on my part as far as a glorified paint spray painter goes. Um, what I did, what I shouldn't do, you guys shouldn't do either. You do it, damn you. Um, what I did to light block this is I just laid it down like this over my booth. I just laid it on, on cardboard because uh, I was only going to hit this side. Just sprayed, you know, sprayed it. Okay, cool. No problem. Rookie mistake is you should not do that, especially if you do not want any paint on the opposite side. Because on the opposite side is the parts you're going to see. And I did not already... Do any adhesion promotion on the other stuff. Basically because I still want to do the photo etch parts before I go to paint. Because it's better to not glue on top of paint. You want to try to avoid that much as possible. Um, but because I did that, what you're supposed to do is when you go paint a part, you want to have it up and spray. Whether if it's a rattle can or an airbrush or... You know, um, if the other side really matters, you know, you want to do that. If, you know, like I, you've already seen me do before where I sprayed stuff on the bottom. Well, because the backside didn't even matter at all, period. But this side it does because light block here and detail on this side. Um, a good way to do it is make sure you're elevated. So in front of whatever booth you got, I got the ginormous freaking fly in here. I want to that little 
he's on my camera now. Hold on. Let's see if I can get him. I oh yeah, I got that. <laughs> ah. You're done. Jeez, he's huge. Let me see if I can show you. Come here, you little. Yeah, you're dead. You gosh. Look at that. Ew. The get out of here. That little has been bugging me all day. Ha! Huh. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Okay, back to the point is, uh, if you have some type of booth, uh, you want to actually, you know, spray away so that way it pulls, you know, the unwanted paint away. When you're doing it down like this, what's going to happen is it's going to go down and go up, you know. So that's why I had on this stuff. I did a lot of cleaning, but I had, you know, overspray on here, which I didn't want because it contaminates the surface. And it's... But... There was a little bit of luck though because I did not do any adhesion promoter. It was a lot easier to clean because it's just a little overspray on the cheap black paint just for light blocking. Um, what I did, what I initially did to clean it was literally just to try to sand it, do a lot of sand in. Here I couldn't do any sand in. Um, so I was like thinking, well, I know you do not want to use acetone on stuff like this. Um, and I think if you do, either dilute it with water or go very quick and then clean it off with some type of water to neutralize it. Um, so, but what I did, I don't know what made me think about it. Oh, oh yeah. Um, basically because I was doing a lot of scraping, I was cleaning off the edges here where I need, you know, the clean plastic to paint. Um, Basically on the fan tail because I also kind of screwed up um, When I went and painted this I painted the whole thing and I forgot like oh wait a minute I want to put the landing strip to be lit through I just screwed that up um, So, you know, I sanded this off and I went to go clean it and I grabbed my you know some some wax and degrease You know try to wipe wipe that off uh, and actually it took it all off. It took the paint completely off the light block of paint off Hmm So it gave me the idea. I was like, you know what? Let me just get a little small paintbrush some q-tips and start cleaning it up in here Which it improved a lot um, Some of the darkest areas on it is where I actually I had sanded and grind down especially the, those little circle thingies from the from the molds That paint is still kind of stuck in there and there's and in crevices is really hard to get out, but took my wax into grease, got a lot of it off with a paintbrush and Q-tip, took it inside, you know, scrubbed it with some uh, uh, Dawn dish soap, hot water, and an old toothbrush. Kind of cleaned it up best I could. Um, this one's a little bit more filthier, but believe me, that stuff's gone. Um, this was a lot easier to clean up, thank God. And same thing about this, but because I was used, figured out with the wax degrease on this stuff, instead of having to scrape all this stuff, I just took a little Q-tip and just took it right off and cleaned it off real good. So yeah, my accident, my rookie mistake was I should have had it elevated, but I learned that even wax degrease can actually help clean up edges for where you need to have it clean again after some pain and soap. Anyways, now time to move forward a little bit. This piece here, I already uh, sprayed some adhesion promoter because I want to make sure I deal with that fantail issue, the, the whole landing strip. I have the masking kit from Orbital Dry Dock, and I thought in there was the masking for that part, but there isn't. So if, in case you're going to do this and you're going to get the Orbital Dry Dock kit, uh, just letting you know the, land, you know the landing stripes are not included on that one. Um, but in a pinch, I just took out the, I cut out the decal one that's in the decal sheet only as reference and I'm waiting on some fine line tape, freaking Amazon, uh, second party venues going through Amazon always seems to delay. I should have had that stuff two weeks ago and now it's like another week out. Um, 
But for now, I just, you know, put a piece of blue tape here, my little metal ruler, hobby knife blade, and just start cutting some very thin strips. I was going to go use also in the Oberto Dry Dock kit. Oh, there's another one. You are going to f die. I swear, I swear, you know what? I'm ready to, s you know, maybe I can super glue your ass here. You know, yeah, we're gonna go. This is cruel. Oh, you. You know what, you are, maybe it's the same f I think he re reincarnated. <laughs> summer, I hate summer. Freaking demonic. I was going to think about using, um, they have like thin masks in here also for using for the chiller grills, even down to like um, less than a 16th. And they usually supply you with extra just in case. I was going to pull out a couple of those, but then I decided, yeah, I got a steady hand with this. Let me just carve a couple of my own. And it's only for right here. So, but the other thing I got to do is I need to paint this with a transparent yellow. Uh, what I'm going to use, use is, sometimes you don't really have to buy Tamiya. Transpare from Createx. This is an airbrush paint. You can get this at like at Hobby Lobby, uh, Michael's, your typical arts and crafts store. Um, and it's a lot cheaper too. I've used this this product when I was learning to airbrush over 10 years ago. It's It's perfectly fine. It's water-based. Um, it's all right for a job like this. So, so what I'm gonna do is, first thing I need to do is I'm just gonna paint this fan tail here yellow. And then it's gonna dry. Then I'm gonna use, literally recreate just a couple stripes in a box. That's really not that difficult. And then figure out the color that I need for this. This little, you just want to be a YouTube star, don't you? Oh, he's on the <laughs> camera again. Hold on. Makeshift spatula. Nah, I didn't get him. <laughs> that f***er's got a death wish. I mean, his other one, they're in pairs. Swear to God. They're like Mormons. Um, okay. Again, I'm going to paint this. And then... I'll either figure out the color. By the way, the color I want to use for this part here, I'm going to match it with the color that the decal part that comes here. Because if you look at the screen, the terrible, terrible matte painting that they used in Star Trek The Motion Picture in that Kirk arriving sequence in the shuttle bay. God awful matte painting. Um, you can see this color here basically matches here and it's a type of bluish. A lot of people like to do it a dark gray or a black, but I'm trying to be a little accurate on this part. Um, speaking of terrible matte paintings, um, good thing, you know, like a lot of my references is on is from the updated director's edition where they actually uh, did some digital fixing on some of that, um, especially at the end of the movie where you see them walk on the saucer section Boy, that matte painting of the saucer section made the Enterprise look like a birthday cake. <laughs> Terrible if you guys remember watching the theoretical version. Okay, enough bullshit. Time to, for me to get this. And when I come back, uh, we'll be back here again uh, doing more stuff. Because I don't think you need to see me just do it. make this yellow. No big deal. It's doing by an airbrush. With this. Bye. Well, from the last thing that I want to show you is what I did on this one. I painted the transparent yellow. So the only thing left to do is to make my own custom mask of the landing bay strip. The way I'm going to go about that is by just slicing some thin strips of blue tape with my trusty little ruler slash straight edge. I don't have my knife with me. I've already pre-did some of them, so I'm going, oh, actually I do have my knife with me. Um, should get a, some tweezers, just in case. Okay. 
and my little reference piece. <clears throat> so it'll probably be the easiest thing to do is to do this upper vertical strip. And this one measures at, let's see, one and three quarters. So, I need a piece that's one and three quarters. Actually, I need to cut the bottom of this off so I have a good straight edge on all of them. Get rid of that chunk. Okay. One and three quarters. One and three quarters. Lift that. Let's see. That's the other thing too. Is like I don't have a good center on this, so so I need to move it. What I should do is actually I should have marked the center. This is gonna be a lot harder than it looks. Actually, that's probably a better thing. I need to make a center line. And some type of center mark. Pencil! One and three quarters, half of that. That is... Uh, seven eighths. Seven eighths of an inch. And make a little mark somewhere on here this is going to get coated again anyways and I gotta go I'm gonna put it right here so just a little tiny mark that I can see I should have done that in the first place just want to make sure my hands are straight and taut okay this line is all ready up So, top part of this box. What do we have for a measurement here? Let's say it's pick an inch to start from. It says, it's actually 11 eighths of an inch. So, let's do that. Eighth section on here makes it easier. Wait, there's no 11 eighths. That doesn't make sense. Huh. But it is an eighth. So let's redo this. No, it's actually less than that. Barely, but it's actually seven eighths. It's like a literally a pair under under seven eighths, but we'll just go seven eighths, okay? And you need to make a mark to, to do that. So we'll go, even though it's seven eighths, just I'm gonna eyeball between three and four. And now we need a distance measurement. It's actually, it's gonna be in the sixteenths. It's like three sixteenths. So, but because it's 3 sixteenths, mark here, and I'm going to scoot it up a little bit so it can be squared. Well, that don't look right, but it's the same. Oh, it is. Okay. Connect the dot somewhat. Okay. All right, peel this up. And by the way, I'm only penciling on what's going to end up getting repainted over and light blocked again. No pencil marks on the yellow that I'm masking over. 
Sometimes a little eyeball reference is good. Looks okay. Alright, so we're now gonna need the length of this silly little box. Let's see if it's more accurate on this side. This is at nine tenths. Yeah, nine tenths. So we'll go. This is gonna be the little harder part. Just find a squared line. And now I need nine tenths of a piece. Had ya? Come on. Grab. There you go. Okay. Now I need another nine tenths and another mark. Try to find a sure it's squared. It's almost like surgery. Okay, now this part, because there's a break in between the box here, so let's see, what is the measurement on each side? Yeah, it's bigger than two tenths, so we're gonna have to go into the anyway, one quarter of an inch. So square it off. And go exactly one quarter. And same for the opposite side. And it has my gap. And I know I need quarter of an inch on each one. Yes, could have spent the extra money and bought a mask that someone made. But sometimes, you know, take pride on doing it yourself. There's the easy way, or there's just my way. It's, it's not the easy way. By all means, I'm not telling yeah. anybody that wants to buy the mask, that's fine. I just want to do this part right now, so. One thing I want to do is kind of check my alignment from center to center. And it doesn't, seems to be a little bit going out of skew. The center should be like right around here. So let's check what's out of skew I have. Let's try this in tenths. Seven tenths over here. Okay, I'm going a little bit out of skew somewhere. Mostly over here. Okay. Okay, I see it. Um, it has to be a minimum. Let's see, a minimum of three inches. It can hang over, which is fine. So let me use this guy right here. Let me get two tweezers. This one's gonna be tricky. Uh, gotta love my filthy hands today, it's, but that's the job of being a professional glorified spray painter in a in a powder coat shop. There's never a day that I'm not monkey with something. Okay, that looks good. Do is I'll just square it off right here. If you want to hold this down, okay, press that in. This can hang over. Okay. Next one's just straightforward. It's basically the same thing, but it just connects to there to there. 
So we just need, again, no less than three inches. Just cut all the way across these other rows that I pre-did. Ooh, a little short on this end. A little too much over there. What else did that just made my gap over here a little bit bigger and I'll just reconnect it. No harm. I'll pull it up so I can get some tension on this tape so it'll be kind of self-straightened. Yes, again, this is the hard way. But I'm totally content to do it the hard way. Tape wants to boil. Okay. A little taunt. All right, now, just a little plug for that, and then for the opposite, put this way, yes, I'm nuts for doing it this way. Turn this off. Can't see it, but there's a there I should little overhang right around there. Just gonna cut that off. Surgery. Okay. Little nub of tape. Same thing on this one. Tape wants to go all over the place. So now this needs to be painted black as a light block and then the shuttle bay color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now before this battery gets hot. Today's special phase of the shuttle bay is brought to you by nobody. Yes, nobody is sponsoring this video. Nobody gives a shit. So thank you to nobody. Now, what we're gonna do is attach some of the photo etch parts and we're gonna, the way I'm doing it is it's probably the way most people do it is that they do it in sections not build the entire shuttle bay and then put it on because I can see that would be asinine and very difficult um I did glue this piece in just because it would be a lot harder to deal with with trying to do this afterwards and of course, you know, just trying to get it together. Um, so that's how I'm doing it. I think most people do it that way too. Um, anyways. So, I already have all my photo etch pieces for the shuttle bay already all cut, all cleaned up. You know, all the nubs taken care of. Um, also for the shuttle bay, there are like the cargo containers and um, the stuff for the work bees and shuttlecraft. I'm going to do those at a different time. I'm primarily just focusing on the shuttle bay. Um, I'm sure I'll film that too. Um, but right, but like I said, I'm just focusing on the shuttle bay. Uh, so I'm going to be using, of course, CA glue. I'm going to be using medium. Um, I do have you know like a kicker here. But of course, you really want to use the kicker at the very end because you're doing a whole bunch at once. You start zapping a little bit of kicker here and and then you go to glue the next piece and that little bit that's still on here of kicker that looks like it's dry will just set up your glue before you even put a piece on it. Um, so I'm going to start from the back to the front and of course in case you don't know, I mean, actually, I didn't know. I'd have kind of figured this out. I thought you actually put these little guys, like, on, you know, right on, on top of all these lines here. They actually don't. They go on the inside, facing if you're going to look down it. So that's how um, that's how you're supposed to put them on. Yeah, because you'd have a pain the next time to try to put them on there. So, I'm going to do a couple just to show you. 
and of course gotta have a couple tweezers and maybe a hobby knife and my favorite tool for this type of project so to have that nearby um oh actually also a good idea because i'm going to work like this or like a ladder i'm going to go ahead and tape this in place the other piece won't have it so i'm going to have to tape it flat because this thing's got a curve it's going to want to rock and roll rock and roll okay And if you're doing it right, the long part on this piece sticks out. So. Yeah, Ooh, a little bit too much glue. That went out too quick. I get orientated. Actually, I'm going to do this one second one above my tape's in the way. Come here. Okay. Got too much of the CA glue that's in that little void, it's a little acetone. I got a little, a little bit on the tip of my thing here. Helps kind of clean it off. May have to dig that part out, or blow a hole into it. There you go. I could use the super thin CA glue. I think that would just be too, too runny. I'm actually going to try to put a little nub here to see if that makes it easier than on this. Oh yeah, it's probably easier. Hold it for a sec. These photo edge parts are so small, it actually wants to literally stick and hold into the fine lines of my fingerprint. You can breathe on it to help set it. So I'll have to do that. Okay, so that's three of those. And you're, there's supposed to be 11 for here. And then the next one has where you have like one, two, three, four. We have these little guys. And I believe, gotta remember. You have a wider opening, you have a smaller opening. The smaller opening goes on the bottom. So, do that. This one's a little tricky. Okay. That one is in place. Then you have, I'm gonna have to hold this in my tweezers. 
these little ones and they go down here on the bottom maybe before it's done I'll show you gotta remember which orientation do they go oh yeah wider side goes up on the top and the thin part of it sticks out there's four of those so I'll just put one here I'm kind of holding the thing in my hand here this one probably definitely tweezers That one goes. And then you have these little mice. And they there's only one for each side. And it goes between this section and this section. this piece which is goes where that where a door would be where I made mine uh, awesome about that it squares it up and when you put the roof piece on there there's, there's a gap where the door goes this piece kind of hides it so that's really great I was wondering I didn't really notice this piece when I was you know looking at my photo edge stuff but I was looking at the same kind of somewhat you know pre-assembled and I'm wondering how the hell am I going to get rid of that gap well there it is that's how you get rid of the gap the railing you have these really fine railing pieces I'm going to do those after I got all these in because you really want to work out in you know so because it'll be a lot harder and more it'd be more dangerous just trying to do the these little pieces after the railing because the railing is so fine and so flimsy um so it's best to do those after you get all these in which i'll show you after i get all these in obviously then there are this piece one for each side that goes right here where some people like to light up. I already said I'm not going to light them up. But I am going to want to be able to paint in here black. And to kind of make it look cleaner, I'm going to actually do this after it's painted. So I can paint this black. Have this painted the same color as the walls around it. And then just put this on top of it. So it just makes the square, my darkened squares look a lot cleaner. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these ribs off camera and then put the railing in so this is how it should look if you did it my way so the next thing to do would be the rails um, and the rails Okay, we'll start with this big one because it's actually a little bit more confusing one because of this right here. The side you're supposed to put it on, the directions say the turbo lift. Let me prop this up. So, the turbo lift is this sucker right there. That's a, without the column there. And obviously one side 
is longer than the other. And these ones you gotta be careful of just because the railing itself is super, super delicate. You want them, there's one side longer, one side shorter. So that break in the middle lines up with there. So that's how you know which side. I suggest the instruction says to bend the railing outwards 10 degrees. Basically, for something this small, you can eyeball it just a little bit. It just means a little bit of a bend out. But I would not do that until after it's all in and painted. Because it, this that railing is so flexy, flimsy. It'll just The more you monkey with it, the more it's going to turn into a wave. So, to glue that up, you just glue it along this edge here. Now, there's another railing that's smaller this one that one goes along prop it up again goes along this edge and then there's a one piece by itself which is that one one thing about this thing it's so flimsy let me try it. ah you okay maybe that's the best way that one goes dead center on the edge of there um I would definitely assume that there's going to be a slight hairline gap in between both. Because if you remember, you got to fold those railings outward. So if you fold them outward that little 10 degrees, the tips should touch. That's how it should go. Um, but I wouldn't stress on it if if it doesn't go that way. It's, it's such a minor detail. Um, and I don't think anybody would even really even notice it. Now, there's another thing when it comes with these ribs. One thing you can do is you can just kind of test set, you know, the roof to it. Now, these ribs should be offset a little bit. And if they're not, you can just tweak them back into place. Now, except for this one right here, because this one would be technically be in the way of those two columns. But, because the one that, if you go this way, I mean, you could have put the photo edge on the opposite side, but then this one would be on the inside, and then you'd have to kind of bend it out. But this one here, just bend it ever so slightly inward, and no one would ever notice it because you, you're looking down in this direction. You'll never even notice that. But if you have some of these a little bit out of skew, you can just go ahead and line it up with there, and you have a good guideline. So that's kind of like how that should look. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just, since I already described for you on what you have to do and where they're supposed to go, and this thing is just so blah, 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 all over the place, i got to mount it somehow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and glue up the three railing on this side, and then obviously then there's the other side. Now just to kind of show you, I already kind of did the other side, that's how I learned how to do this side which is right here. See, this is how the railing should go. Um, this one, because I did this one first, it was my trial and error piece. This one I did with the super thin CA glue. Uh, one thing about that, even though going lighter as, like very light with it as possible, it is just obviously super runny. My theory was that way it would, if it's gonna be runny, it's not gonna give me like humps or bows or whatever, but what it did, is that it kind of filled in my little soon to be blue windows. So I had to draw them out, which I was going to have to do anyways, redraw them out after painting and everything because they're so small. But in this case, I had to do it after this phase because it literally filled them in. And if I were to paint them or if I were to draw them after paint it, I wouldn't be able to find the holes. They've basically been filled in. So my opinion is don't use the super thin I mean, you can, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I can kind of see how shiny it is and it kind of pulled into one corner. Whereas this one I just did, it's a lot cleaner. So use the medium uh, CA, don't use the super thin just because it's a super tiny small part. You want a, such a little piece in there. Uh, just a little drop of the medium was just enough and it won't be as a little bit messy as this. You're not gonna really see this anyways because like, because you look down this direction and after when paint's done, It'll be okay. But to be extra detailed, medium. Okay, I'm off to do this part. And 
the next little cutscene should have railing. All right, so the main photo etch parts are done for the shuttle base. So the next thing really to do is I got to, you know, redraw out the holes and then we're going to go into paint. Um, I'm going to actually, to make things easier, is that I've got to obviously go back and look at the screenshots. Uh, give me a color. I believe down here is a different color than up here. Up here is like a green. Um, either way, I'm going to go do down here below the railing first because when I do the color up here, it's a lot easier to mask off down here than it is up there. So, off camera, again, it's just redrawing out the holes the same way as I showed you how to do them. Um, and then set up for color. And I think maybe I'll sh set up the booth so uh, you can actually see me paint this. Son of <laughs> so I made my own custom green out of the screenies. It, the, 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 the map paint and screenshot of it is not really a good reference, but that's the best one that I think that there is. Just because the way it looks, it always looks like it's in shadows. So to get the exact shade is probably impossible. So I just did my best interpretation. So I made this type of green because out of my collection, just there wasn't one by itself. It's primarily like half of what is known as green sage and basic green, half and half. And a couple little drops of each of a silver gray and a Mediterranean blue, which is basically a light blue. Just to tint it a little bit because to me the green in there looks have a like a bluish gray hue so that's where these kind of came in uh this was close but it just needed to have a little bit more darker greenness so that's why that's in there uh, so basically i came up with this and it's already been reduced down so let me turn on my boost fan my my uh air comp little airbrush air compressor now in here, hopefully you can hear me. Um, this is actually all the same. Basically everything here, from here on back, is green. This is something different. So that's where I'm gonna paint. Same thing for over here, here, and this back wall. Makes it easier when it comes to masking for the other side, that's for sure. Test word. All righty. side we do it upside down kind of kind of have to get both sides and all clearly all directions might have to take a couple passes at it plus I'm switching hands too which is kind of difficult Especially for this type of siphon feed airbrush. I use this one just for boring stuff. I got better airbrushes. But I use them for better paints and more finer detail. A couple badgers and an Iwata. This is also a badger too. It's a one, 155 Anthem. In case you want to know. That set up. Give this another little coat just to make sure. paint in here 
for the I need to get myself a dedicated stand. Just haven't yet. Okay, you stay right there. A little heat gun action. It's a good thing about this type of paint, you know, it, you can heat gun it and it'll set up really quick and it won't and it doesn't take that much heat at all. This way I can just get it set up so I can put another quick coat on it without it being too runny and making a big old mess. If you want to do it too long then your paint will start to crack. Just enough to get the surface set up. Don't want to stay too long on one part either. Not only it can crack the paint, you don't want to warp your plastic either. Just enough to kick it. Get a little love. Okay. Good thing I made extra. I just see a little area. So I don't mind going over here. That's going to get a different color anyways. And like I said, it'll be... This right here I can mask off. But. Really starting to like it. Just double check just to make sure. We'll be in this corner back here, yeah, this corner over here, it's kind of... Get to... Of course you want to kind of look, look down on it the way you would be looking on it when it's complete. No more of the ribs. Okay, I think that's fine right there. Set you, well actually dump you back out. Nothing really in there. So this is what I have. Time to let this dry, clean up my mess here. And then, Figure this stuff out. Now the greenish crap is dried. Oh, I also forgot that I needed to paint this part too. Um, luckily, I noticed that before I was about to clean up and I just took a second look over my corner. I was like, what is, I swear I remembered there was a little bit of, that, of this on the ceiling part and I looked at it, that's ah, pretty much the whole thing. Um, so I shot that real quick, no big deal. Um, so now it's time for like some hand painted detail because it's next to impossible to try to mask up little areas for, for with an airbrush. Basically, like I said, I'm planning to do is doing this section first, then doing this. This I already, of course I did off camera just to see what I'm, what, you know, what I'm up against. Um, 
So the hardest part about this, I would have to say that that I painted was literally the walkways. Because trying to actually get in between the railing and in here, it, it's, a, it's a mother... I'll tell you that. It's a mother... Um, so the, the real trick is, is just not getting any paint on here. Except on this side. Because you'll never see this side looking in. So I got a couple little bits on this side. But looking straight down this way, you, there's no paint on it. Um... But yeah, it's like surgery. It's like fine surgery just trying to do this. Um, so my walkway color on here is pretty much the same color that I'm going to be using for the Photon Torpedo Launcher. Um, and the color I'm going to be using for that is known as Stormy Gray. It's a real dark gray. Um, also on here, I end up... You know, looking at the screenshots of the, the really goofy matte painting, it's really kind of hard to tell because the way it's paint, the matte painting on the film is made to look like it's kind of poorly lit. Um, these in here could be dark, like a dark green, and I thought about it, and it's like, God, the, the greens is a little bit out of, this is just really weird. So I went for a dark, like, like a, a medium darkish gray, so I went for pewter gray just for in here. And I decided to accent like the edges of the walkway and the walls with like a off-white and but the color I'm using is known as suede, but it's basically like an off-white. Um, same thing for right here. And in here I used uh, like a navy blue because from what I can see it kind of matches uh, what the floor in the middle is supposed to look like. So I kind of matched it up with the decal. And I also used a little bit of it just on here on these four little ends, just on the very edge of that. So that's what I did on this one. So I'm going to kind of show on the pain and <laughs> difficulty is to literally paint this thing. Um, so like my, my way of going about it is kind of go work your way out. So of course for me, uh, the thing I would have to start with would be these uh pain in the ass little walkways so and of course to do that you're going to need one of these and a really fine fine tip brush and a light too believe me it was no fun no fun at all and I had to do it like going forward in between just really to get up against the wall and then ooh, see that's kind of a hard thing to deal with. You gotta be careful of this railing. And then to get up against the railing on this side. So it is not easy. I mean you literally have to go back and forth. Feet in between this these stupid little columns. And you could only like, you can only move your brush around so much too. At the same time, you're trying to be careful of the photo edge parts so you don't bend them as well. So yeah, it's like, this is like diffusing a bomb. So I'm just trying to get much as I can in one area. Tell you this. This is nerve wracking. Now if you get, like I said, if you get paint on this side of the, of these photo etch, it's okay because you can't see it once it's installed. And if you were able to see it once it's installed, please tell us how you're able to do it because that we all be amazed. Just Going a little bit back and trying to get close to the wall as I can from this angle before I flip it over and try to get it dead on. And see, this this part sucks. And the thing is, you probably can't even see this walkway as it's installed. 
and then and then, like I said, you probably can't. Does it? Does it mean I'm like for sure? Like, oh yeah, you can't see it. Because in that case, I was like, what's the point? But sometimes it's that little bit of extra detail that makes it stand out. And the thing is, because you're hand painting this, you're gonna have to kind of go back at it twice just because you can't even get a good even brush stroke on it you almost like just have to dab it I know this angle is hard for you to see but just trying to prove that it can be done and it's also Proof that hey, I actually I did do this. I have evidence. I made a video. So that's kind of like how to do it. It's going to take a second coat because you know you're spreading the paint around and you know you can see some of the green through it, but it has to dry a little bit. And you got and you're just doing the same thing for you know all the platforms here. So that's basically what it is. So I'll finish this up and then show you what I do down here. So the walkways are now painted, if you can see. So the next thing to paint on here are these little crisscrossy thingies. And for that, I'm using pewter gray. Except like I explained, I don't think dark green really looks correct for it. And the way I go about that is almost like dry brushing, but not dry brushing. Just, just like a little, like really small amount, just on the tip and just, you know, being very, very, you know, just careful. And it is really hard to do. Especially this back corner right here. Oh, this sucks. The key is good vision, a steady hand, and just very little paint just on the very tip of your brush because you don't want to have a big glob. You don't want to go into little voids because there is little voids. And I'm just doing it on the top of the surface. I'm not trying to get on like on the edge of it as I'm trying to get the edge of it go figure you, know, you just got to find a steady spot to work with and take your time seriously take your time don't rush this part so I should start looking something like that so again I'm gonna go ahead and do this same thing on the back wall over here. And I'm gonna do some of it right here in this same color. That's the next thing. Next thing you're gonna see is that complete. So now it's time to do the off-white. Again, the off-white is in below the railing, like on the edge of the walkways, um, in the center of this pillar here. And I'm gonna do it on these four, well actually five, on the back, on the very back wall. But to get started, I'll just go ahead and, let's see. Probably do the very back wall. The one in the corner is gonna be the hardest just because, well, it's in the corner. You know, the turn back in the corner. Well, that's what it feels like. Same thing like everything else. You know, very small little bit on the tip of a brush. And I mean like, not even ant size. It's kind of looking like that if you can see it. Just in case you can't see it on the back over there. I do the rail in in front of it. Remember, like I say, it's it's just a matter of working your way out. Your back wall. Let's see. Bottom lip of this upper walkway, the long one.
railing. So now I'm gonna go finish the rest and then we'll be doing the navy blue. Now it's time for the navy blue. And where I'm gonna use the navy blue is right here in the center of here. As you can see, I got some white, some of that white that spilled over. There's no big deal, it's gonna get painted over. And on the four photo edge pieces, just on the thin edge and a little bit down here. So I'm gonna place where I'm putting this blue. Probably start down here. I know you can't see it from here, but just because I'm left-handed and where the camera's positioned. If I did the other one, you probably wouldn't be able to see it, but you'll see it in a sec. If you'll actually be able to see it. It's like, this is just very, it's very thin and hardly an accent. It'll be right down in here. Okay, so the next blue spot, of course, is the centerpiece. Well, this little, I don't know what would be the appropriate name for it. But it's kind of like a dividing area from, I guess this would be the first, first level, second level, third level. We'll just say the spot that separates the second and third thick area. Of course, this one's got to be careful because I don't want it, it. I only want it on the flat of the front and that's it. This one might take a couple coats only because I can still see some of that white through this paint. Make sure it's nice and straight. And of course, if any rolls over the edge, I'll just touch it up again with the same white. So it's like that, which of course, when you look down, be like that. So, see I think that is it for this let me just compare it with the other piece just mm, goody 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 all right so i can say that this section of the shuttle bay is done so when all this dries, going to actually go over here. Um, one thing I think, nah, maybe I won't do it. I just got to be careful. Um, actually, I may actually do it. Nah, nah, that'll be fine. I was thinking about going ahead and shoot this with some matte clear just to seal it so I can safely tape it. But I can always just use my blue tape and just rub it on my shirt and get some of the lint off it just to make the you know the the adhesive on it even more or less so I don't pull any of this up but it has the adhesion promotion promote the the adhesion promoter so it should help it out very well and I think that this will be it for me it's gonna be it for the night but next thing we'll do that We're back. Um, I already went ahead, finished off these sides here. You see right here. By the way, right here, all I I just sanded off the paint there because I'm going to re-glue the photo etch pieces on top of it. Just went ahead and paint inside the squares black. 
because I really believe they're not supposed to be lights. And just gonna put the photo edge part over it. And I, of course I sanded that off so this CA glue has something good to stick to. And I went ahead and painted the land of bay. Um, doing it based of course off the terrible matte painting. You know, like when you look at it, you can kind of see, you know, this color, which is basically almost similar to the decal, really kind of matches all the way back. So I did it in the same type of dark blue. And also in the, in the matte paint, in, in the front over here is a lot darker. So I did it in basically my stormy gray, but I did a half and half of stormy gray, not stormy gray, stormy gray and black chunk of something landed on it and while i was doing that white i ended up painted like just the front edges of these two just to break it up and dry brushed just some of the detail right here even though you're really not going to see much of it because you're going to look at it kind of like that um and i did that in my tin metallic silver so as far as that goes the paint is done the only thing really left to do before I seal it with some matte clear. By the way, all my inner pieces, uh, the shuttle bay, the rec deck, the officer's lounge, the arbor arboretum, those are being sealed in a matte. And the exterior of the ship, I'm probably going to initially do it just to seal off the paint colors and um, in also the matte, but then after it gets all the decals, I'll top it off with a satin or a semi-gloss. Um, so, but before, well, let's actually, now we'll do this one first. Peel off the masking that I made for the landing strip. Only because this is more dry than those black holes. And we got another visitor bugging me just today. His name is Ralph. The Ralph the fly. Ralph's gonna die, just letting you know. So please don't don't call uh, PETA about a freaking fly. He's going to die. And die by my hands, because you know what I creep across the land. Killing firstborn fly. Hell yeah. And yes, I'm sure an aftermarket final decal will look better. You know, some of this stuff you gotta just kind of be proud that you did it the hard way by hand, I guess. I guess the only person that that can tell about the imperfections is really me. Well, you guys too, because I'm pointing them out. Maybe if I didn't point them out. I just had one more to go about being attacked by tape. Let me get it from this side. There we go. A lot easier. Landing strip. And it's supposed to... Oh, let me see if I can show you this way. Yeah. I like it. And the other kind of happy accident that was somewhat intentional and somewhat not when I was thinking about it, when I was cutting my little strips for these three right here, I was noticing they were kind of tapering from wider to short. So I kind of made a conscious effort to put the wider end in the front and the narrow end in the back gives it like that forced perspective you know like it's up like it's going to like it gives it more depth so i kind of like took advantage of that so as i'm kind of looking down it, it's like yeah kind of did work so that's this piece now time to do some gluing
Uh, of course, photo edge parts are pain in the butt to pick up. Or they, uh, you ah! kind of scratched it a little bit. That's okay, I can touch it up. Cool. So, I guess it's uh, time to actually seal this thing up with some clear, and then it'll be decal time. Well, let's now discuss uh, clear parts before we go into decals. Um, something I decided to do was already detail the two columns. And I already glued them in. Um, but first, let me explain the paint job on these two. Um, it's pretty simple. I just, all I really did was give it like a medium gray. But I do plan on lighting the columns. So I painted the whole thing, used the dental pick, and just scraped out the paint from the windows and the two thin band here is which was gives me something that I don't really see much anybody else do because I could see how difficult it would be just to mask it, but it'd be a lot easier to have something with a very fine point and just scrape it out. Um, and I already did kind of test lid it just by even with the little holes through here, as long as you clean off the paint on both sides from here and even on, on this piece here where it glues in, uh, I scraped out underneath it. Of course, you kind of have to need to because you got to glue it in. Uh, I just glued it in also with regular model glue. Um, but even the pinholes, the little holes here, actually lit it up, even through there. But I have a feeling I'm going to end up kind of widening that by drilling a hole. Of course, not as wide as this, but enough to slip like an LED or an SMD in there on both sides um, but a little trick you should probably think about if you're gonna pre-glue this is as you're gluing this you might want to actually I think you should is to assemble the shuttle bay and only glue this part up believe this alone assemble it have this in here while it's setting up don't take too long so that way these two columns will dry aligned perfectly where it's supposed to go because if you got any one of these a little bit off skew and you're going to be really fighting it to get in, into the land to the two landing holes so yeah glue one side kind of put it together you know let it sit until this is solid and then you're pretty much fantastically golden um also i kind of pre-prepped the clear plastic for the lights go uh, for this piece, which goes in here, what I did was there are these fine, not ribs, but you got these lines, recessed lines in here. Um, I first went ahead and just painted inside of them black. Um, I didn't really care if a little bit got over the outside on top of this, which I'll explain later. I just painted it black as a light block to give it some separation. And then I painted it the same tin silver as I did with the dry brush up here. 
And then I took 1500 grit sandpaper and then I just sanded the face of it, which removed the paint that bled over on top and just gave me the thin lines and it creates, you know, some nice diffusion. I also did the same on the edges over here because these two ribs are the only parts that show through. And I also did on the same piece that goes on the end over here. So just sand it with 1500 kind of will diffuse any light sources that's going to be in on how you're going to light it because I think hot spots kind of look dumb so it kind of helps with that so that's the pre-prep on the plastic pieces as far as that goes so the next thing that has to be dealt with are the decals for the shuttle bay I've kind of already pre-cut them out you already noticed that I already had that one cut out um, this one is for the black area down here on the lower area. Um, you have two that say lifeboats, which they should be going. I'll double check, but I'm pretty positive that they actually go kind of right where the in front of the column here on this one part that looks square which is kind of dumb because you're not going to you'll never see that one they could have picked a better spot for it um and of course i got you know all my different cargo bay doors and then there's this one more piece that you can't really see on here it's just a bunch of numbers it says one three five two four and six which i believe i'm not sure i gotta recheck but i think i think they go up here somewhere i will double check that one so now i gotta get me some water set up i think the most difficult ones i'm gonna have to work with is getting these cargo doors inside these areas Especially in here in between. I have a feeling I'm going to be doing a lot of fighting on that. Um, I think I'll end up testing the first one. Probably on the very last end. Because that would be the harder one to see as you're, you know, as you're looking down. It would be really kind of hard to see any imperfections on the very end. As opposed as up here in the front. Uh, nothing goes on the front in front of this guy, so you'll actually be able to see that one more clearly than down here. Probably, I'll probably actually do this corner here because down low would probably be the harder one to see. Um, that way, you know, obviously you get it. Just try to do the one you're going to have the most difficulty one seeing first, just because if there's any little mistakes, you'll get the hang of it by the time you get down to the end. So that's how I'm going to work at it, get set up on that, and it's be time for some decals. Okay, I guess we can start on the parts that I'm dreading the most. The doors. So let's see how this one works. Better get a little pair of tweezers to retrieve that and a lot more. Yeah. And of course, the easier just to add a little drop of water. I'm just doing from my fingertip on the area that's gotta go. Yeah, this is doing such a little piece. Okay. I'm just holding the decal part down as I take my tweezers and slide the back in. 
And I'm going to use my little demo pick that I love so much. Put it in place. What I kind of notice is that these decals are slightly larger than the opening itself. It's like they're not perfect to fit. Well, this is a, not a little foam little brush. I'm using it just to push it down, dab, and to suck up some of the extra water. What I think because of that, we're gonna need some decal solution. I'm gonna go grab that, some microsol. Microsol. Let me just Gently brush it on. That's it. Wasn't too bad. Just don't really like on how much bigger that the decal is for the opening. Um, I guess the best way to really hide that in this case hmm, actually just trying to be even as possible. So I'm gonna do the doors off camera show you that I did one means it is possible. I'm going to do the rest of these on both pieces, and then I think we'll just do another set. All right, after going through a bunch of these uh, cargo bay doors, um, what I learned that kind of made it easier, I would suggest cutting them down. I mean, really trimming them as tight as possible. Maybe I can show you on the last one that I got right here. So I'm going to show you what I've learned to make this easier other than trying to pick it up. Literally, you got to trim them tight as possible. Just because these are die cut, um, if you were going to get aftermarket ones, you would have to be trimming them tight anyways because those aren't die cut. Um, so either way, you're trimming them down. Um, so, also I'm gonna show as far as putting them on this piece, cause down here, if you're gonna set it up like this, um, you're gonna be fighting because it's not gonna wanna stay still as opposed of, you know, laying them down. So, I suggest propping them up. I'm using one of these helping hands, little guys here, and a little inconspicuous little spot, which is right here. So that's stable and I'm um, and this spot right here in front of the room that's where the two that's where the lifeboat decals go and I'm already trimmed those down same way as did these just in case so so we're gonna do this last one trim down as much as tight as possible we'll put it in the water Submerge and it only takes about 15 to 30 seconds at the most. I got a little tiny drop of water on the tip of my finger so I can rest it just in there. And that's so when I put the decal in, it has a little bit more time before it sets up too quick and I can move and adjust it around. That's key. Also, this little thing is very important. Very. Um, I'll explain as soon as we get to it. And of course, tweezers 
and this guy again has been very helpful this is what I use to actually align it up you'll see so now I'm using my tweezers just to pull the little decal out now this is the only time I actually kind of touch it with with my fingers literally my my thumb and finger it's just to slide it out enough to where the paper there's a little bit of the backing paper and just barely enough like about so then of course I lost it there it is all right let's pick this sucker back up again gotta reach around here and I'm using my little dental pick guys just to hold it down close as possible pull the paper out now that little drop of water it's just the decal is just sitting on top of it floating so I can take this guy and just kind of position it close as possible to where I want it make sure it's lined up not push down that's what this is I just push it straight down because it's already lined up it pushes the excess water out and onto my little foam brush and absorbs it and it folds the four corners up a little bit and immediately after that you know just do a little check if I have to do any adjustments I can but very minor there we go push it back down again because I just tweaked it a little all right and then take my micro saw and just put a little bit in there and that's just because the four corners even though I trimmed these down as much as possible the corners of it are still bigger than the open in itself so it's got to go up like this so it's going to allow it to do that so it doesn't screw up the flat part so that's what it should look like and then of course I'm going to do the same technique I don't want to need that guy no more for the lifeboat and hopefully you don't put it in upside down which for me it's going to be this way same technique a little drop of water it's kind of hard to get that drop of water in there because there's two railing he said it only takes about 15 to 20 seconds in this case because it has lettering uh, pay attention to its orientation and I slide them off in the same direction so in this case the wording to this would be the lettering be completely normal to where I should be okay I'm gonna use this just to prop this up so it doesn't roll back on me There, slide my paper out. Now I can work this in place. And make sure that red stripe is pretty parallel as possible. Same technique. Push this down. That way it pushes the water out. And then another dab of microsoft. I mean, this one kind of fit in there pretty well, but I'm just gonna make sure. So, like that. I got one more. All right, next one are these. Uh, I want to. I don't even have a name for them. Um, they're basically uh, floor outlines for the cargo pods. Um, of course, they're numbered. This is one big decal uh, on the numbers of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four goes right up against here. You can match it in the screenshot. So, time to put that in water. Probably a little, get this a little bit wet. This one may take a little bit longer to move.
Don't want to fight water slide decals because you don't want to rip them, of course. In case any of you watching this is a kind of noob like me who's seen these videos and go, I want to build it, but yet don't have much experience. All right, just barely sliding it off. This, in this case, I'm just kind of holding down my finger. Okay. Now I just want to get it aligned. I'm using that middle box as where to line it up. Paper towel, actually clean paper towel. push the water out. Be no need for the decal solution on here on this part. Because it's a flat piece. Oh it should look like that. This one should be red like this. Oh, my paint, the paint print matched pretty good on this one. So, put this in the water. It wants to curl up. Get this a little wet. By the way, this has already been uh, clear coated with some matte clear. Just because of the type of paint that I'm using, this craft paint, it, it is a water base, and if you're doing water on top of water base that's not sealed, it'll come right up, reactivate. And then, of course, after when the decal, all these decals are fully dry, 24 hours later at least, I'm going to do another round of matte clear. But also, I'm gonna do is I've already kind of pre-made a little photo etch cargo pad. I'm gonna paint them up and put them in here and also a couple of the photo etch figures. I'm gonna put a couple of them in there. Because this is the biggest area. It needs at least a couple bodies. Let's see how this is going. Double check. Let me actually look at it the way I see it on screen. Okay. Got some slight action already. Okay, do it like this so you can see. What we do is get a little flat part here. A little bow. Well, the plastic is undabbing. underneath is a little bit rough so eh, it'll be fine so it should look like that I'm kind of amazed that this actually matched that pretty damn well the sheen will match after I spray the same clear because that's the other thing too when you're obviously the sheen is because of the decal it looks different it looks flashy well you've got to kind of match it when you seal it with whatever clear you're using I'm going to dull it up so now the last of the decals are two sets of numbers. Uh, it's these white ones, which you really can't see. It's kind of hard. To, it just looks like white strips right here. Maybe I got a hard time seeing which one it is. Ah, okay. This is the one I'm looking for. One, three, and five. They go right here. Submerge that. 
little dab of water where they gotta go. Give that a couple seconds to set. All right, see how these are going. Not quite yet. Almost. Put this one. There we go. And now the last one. wet this on my part. Should look like that okay so the decals for that is done but I can't really do anything with it till they're fully set so I guess what I can do it is do the cargo pods get them painted up and build a couple shuttle crafts to actually kind of set in here so I want to go in the kit and dig out which ones I want to use. I'm not going to use every single one. I'm just going to use ones I just want to sit in here. So what you're looking right here is actually the completed shuttle bay. And the reason why you're not seeing me putting it together is because I did shoot that video. And actually what my plan was right now was to be going through the footage and doing the final edits on this video. And I just realized I have no audio on it. Uh, God, I'm getting terrible at this again. Um, so instead of showing you me gluing the pieces together on it, I'm going to have to just do what I did not want to do, is the whole, which is the whole point of why these videos are long, 
is I don't want to do, hey, this is what I did. I'm going to tell you what I did, but I'm not going to show you what I did. You're just going to get before and afters. In this case, you're going to, the last segment was a before, and now here's an after. So I guess I have to do it that way. Old things glued in with model glue. Rescraped all the edges of the pieces where it goes together, so it's clean plastic. Model glue to clean plastic helps bond together. Um, I did do shuttlecraft and people. I don't know if you can see it that well, but yeah, they're right there. And if you look in the photos, which I'm going to include at the end of this video of it with its final paint just before assembled so you can see some of the detail before here because you can't see much detail anyways uh you'll you'll see in the back in the very back here i put a in the with the cargo pods there's a little naked person in there just to have a little fun um of course i went through checked for light leaks which at the very end I just went ahead and took some canopy glue to all the seams on the outside, of course, as kind of like a filler. And then I went over it with some black paint everywhere and just rechecked by, you know, shining a bright flashlight all the way around in there and find a little spot. And I took care of it on the outside. And over here for the little windows here, canopy glue in here just to kind of get in the holes. And I did some blue Tamiya, um, canopy glued the clear plastic and other than that this thing is good this thing is good this thing is pretty much finished the only thing really left to do is to modify it for lighting especially on the two columns which are probably turbo lifts or something like that um, even though it has the two little pin plastics in there it shines pretty good here I'll actually do it with a flashlight even though this is a really bright <laughs> flashlight but I'll do it on its low setting if you can see it, or maybe if I kick it on even brighter, yeah, it'll still show through through that little hole, and even down in here. Let me drop it down to its lowest, maybe a little bit more. You know, go all the way down. Probably be more like this in the end, but but I think what I'm going to end up doing. In case I didn't mention in the last video, um, as far as the columns go, I'm going to actually kind of open them up a little bit just by drilling a little bit through where the little holes are, well, the little, where, you know, this crap. And just enough, just deep enough where I could put in like an SMD uh, on both sides. I think I'm going to do blue on the bottom and white on the top and just let the let the light clash um, as far as the brightness on it it just depends on uh, how much watt how much voltage I want to go through it and I'll just go through uh, random sort of resistors see which ones that give me that reduce or pretty much give it the right amount of power for the right amount of a luminosity um, but yes this build is done so with that, this video is done. And now we can actually start working on the actual ship itself and, and going about it the way like I do with these parts. Work your way in, out. So I got the internal pieces done. Now it's time to work out. And I see a lot of other videos out there where most people will do the saucer in this case I'm not going to do the saucer first I want to start with the foundation where everything connects to and that's the secondary hull so we'll start dealing with the secondary hull and of course we'll involve this thing and we'll just work our way out so end of this video I'm sure you're tired of watching this crap tired of top hearing me talk with all my goddamn audio problems hopefully I can solve that by the next video and with that go watch something else hey Boyd's Trek channel go watch that one too <laughs>